again, Steve here with a few comments on our coffee chat that we had last night, the 9th of January 2016. First coffee chat we've had in a while. It uh, I was gone most of last year, some of you know, and I just had one in November. But I decided to uh, give it another go and uh, with a bit of a different angle on it. And I just wanted to give a little bit of a summary of the event. First of all, there were uh, 24 of us there, which was a great turnout for a very, very cold evening. It was probably about minus 25 or something like that in the Celsius scale. And it was uh, in, a, in a new location on 8th Street here in Saskatoon. Great location in the basement of the, ba the Baha'i um, uh, Gallery, the Prairie Star Gallery. And what we what I did is, uh, this time around is I did a uh, presentation. And then we had a round of, a round of we had a round of introductions. We had a presentation, and we had then comments on the presentation and a bit of just meet and greet. It was I thought I thought it went over quite well. So I just wanted to give a little bit of summary of my presentation, and I'll post it on the various sites on uh, the meetup site and so on. And if anybody wants to comment on comments that were made, that would be great. Now the topic was, let's make crazy the new normal in 2017. And I started out with what I thought was um, a bit of a one-liner. It didn't go over very well. What I said is, uh, it took me some time to decide what to talk about. So therefore, in the interest of not being in potential overkill, I thought I'd talk about 10 minutes. But I think I went a bit over time as it worked out. But anyway, so I started out with basically saying, crazy. Who wants to be crazy? Who wants crazy? I looked up crazy in a, a regular dictionary on my Mac here, and I found out that the first meaning is mentally deranged. You know, nobody wants to be crazy, right? Nobody wants to be mentally deranged. But I thought the third meaning was interesting in terms of a metaphor for our lives. Because it was in, re well, for one thing, it was in reference to an angle, so it didn't really mean us, but... The meaning was interesting, in reference to an angle, appearing as absurdly out of place or in an unlikely position. Now that's interesting because of what I wanted to talk about. Now my presentation, I broke it down into two theories, basically. The first theory was um, a working theory on how we relate to the world, right, us individually. And the, and the second part was a working theory on how we end up the way we do. And the first, so on that first one then, I broke it down into how it is that we relate to the world. We as human beings, if we're sane, we see those things that we can control, those things that we can't control, and we were able to discern to a great extent the difference between the two. What I did was I asked somebody who was sitting in this group of 25 people or so, and it was just a white beige wall across the room. And I said, look, are you able to change that color of that wall to blue? Right? And the lady said, no. Just just from sitting where you are. I'm not, not only taking a roller and painting it, but just from sitting where you are, can you change it blue? No. Now I said, can you change it blue in your mind, like in your in your imagination? She said, yes. Okay, so it's blue in your imagination. Okay, now, everybody else, is the wall blue? No, it's white, it's beige. So you can't, con you know, it seems like the impression is we can't do it without doing something else, like getting a roller and painting it, right? Next question was, can you raise your arm? Boom, up goes the arm, same person. Now, up, the arm, arm is up. Can everybody see the arm is up? Yes, everybody can see the arm is up. So that's just an obvious, simple example of, you know, the controllable, arm up, the uncontrollable, well, I can't just paint that wall blue. I can do it in my mind, but it's not blue. And we can clearly see the difference. Now, in our early lives, when we come into the world, I think, that those lines are a little bit blurred. Later on, we see them as not so blurred. For example, I would guess that a baby, newborn baby, is not going to think about, hmm, mother's milk, I can't control, and so on. No, they just scream when they're hungry, mom comes running, and puts the baby to breast, right? 
So the baby doesn't see maybe that the milk and the crying are one uncontrollable. They didn't create the other one. The scream created, and but they seem to be paired together. So they have like an emotional bond then. But later on in life, as we grew up, we understand mother's milk we didn't create as individuals. Mum did. The scream we created, but they somehow got fused together. And now we see the difference between the two. We can discern the difference between the two. So that's the first thing, how we relate to the world, right? The second one is, the second part of this, uh, the, the theory on how we end up the way we are, is begins with the comment that nobody, almost nobody, wants us to be ourselves. Not our parents, not our teachers, not our religious people, not our schools, not our acquaintances, not society, not necessarily spouses. Aside from ourselves, I guessed that there might only be one class of individuals, very rare individuals often, who are okay with us, in fact, want us to be ourselves. And I asked people, who do you think they are? And somebody guessed it. And that is a friend. A true friend. It was once said by, I forget who it was, that if we have one true friend when we die, we have succeeded in life. I think that's an interesting statement. Now, friend could be any one of those other people. Friend could be a parent, could be a spouse, could be somebody in society, could be a teacher, could be a religious teacher or whatever. It could be. But I'm going to make the case that the evidence is quite clear that down through the ages, right from the get-go, we have been psh, branded because we weren't okay the way we are for some reason. Look, if you look at ourselves and what we are as individuals, I'm not talking about the ether and the souls and all that other, other realities or whatever. I'm talking about here and now, us, you and I as individuals. What do we identify as our ourselves who walk about and so on? Well, we could say, yes, we have this body that walks about that we identify as us or part of us for sure. We have a mentality that we can think and we can create and so on with, right? We can make a decision, make the body go here or there. We also have emotions, right? So emotions are somewhat distinct from at least rational thought. We can be angry or we can be sad or happy and still look at the chair and say it's a fine looking chair, right? So it's still, there's a little bit of a, um, a differentiation there, all tied together, but a bit of differentiation. Now, I would say that physically, there's lots of examples in the world, and still today, where children are not okay physically the way they're born. I forget that. I was reading this story one time about this guy wrote a book, and he had this little paragraph about what happens to kids. Like, it's not okay. They're poked and prodded and so on. I mean, still to this day, millions and billions of kids, primarily boys, have part of their penis ch chopped off when they're born. You know, God created everything. God's so great. God's beautiful. God can only do perfection. Oops, he left a foreskin on this kid. Ch chop. No good. Can't have that on there. You know, this girl wasn't born with pierced ears. Ch ch better pierce that ear. You know, we're, 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 we're not okay the way we are. We're changed, right? And then mentally, of course, but not only that, I mean, there's lots of other things that happen. I mean, Chinese girls just have their feet bound, and other kids have their heads wrapped, so they get this gourd thing on the back of their head. and I mean, just all kinds of god-awful things, uh, you know, scarring across the forehead and whatever, weird stuff. And mentally, of course, we're labeled, right? We're given names. We're given conditions. You have ADHD. You're a Canadian. You're a Catholic. You're a Muslim, you're a Saskatonian, you're, you're all these different things. And I, I know that empirically and logically to be true. I, ha I have the bracelet that, was, that I was, put, was put on me as soon as I would come out of the, my mother's womb. And all it said on there was baby boy, <laughs> you know, and uh, it was, there, was, there was no name, right? So, but, but I still existed. 
and, I, and that so but that began the mental mental labeling right not saying that all these things are necessarily bad in fact they may even be necessary what i'm saying is there was that there was the imperative by many to change or to put things upon us to so that we're not so it's like us plus at that point right and emotionally of course we're given prescriptions of what is right and wrong not necessarily reasoning but prescriptions and these are backed up by reward and punishment right reward and punishment you know he sees you when you're sleeping he knows if you're awake he knows if you've been bad or good so be good for goodness sake not an argument right as the uh, the meme goes these days but nevertheless i mean santa claus is sort of a metaphor for uh, moral code in a way right and you know it's a sim similar thing to gods and so on if you're good you can be rewarded if you're not you can be punished it's not about an argument as to give me the philosophical backing to your assertion there it's just a prescription it's like we told you this and therefore uh, you have to do it that creates an emotional um, imprint I would say and the result of course of all of this piling on is that we then begin to mold ourselves we are creatures designed and geared through evolution and so on to survive I would say and we mold ourselves in such a way that we begin an epi epigenetic um, process to actually change neural pathways and so on which change us from what we were to what we become and we become different individuals I would say damaged individuals in some cases in many cases with scars remaining but at the root of this individual remains that unblemished child deep within us and I would say the degree to which that the difference remains between that unblemished child and who you became is that gulf of frustration which if, if not sorted out and not recognized leads to a frustration throughout life so uh, crazy coming back to crazy to others and very often to ourselves without a lot of work anyway the prospect of actually going back or discovering that real self and stepping out into what that wants can be labeled as crazy some of you know that I did for example this is not to toot my horn I just use it as an example some of you know that I did an 8,000 kilometer walk in a uh, six month period an unassisted backpack walk of um, in excess of a, a marathon a day last summer and when I was starting out on it, a brother of mine who only found out about the walk not long before I started he actually told me that my walk to him uh, seemed provocative <laughs> which if you I mean it, it, the translation or the the definition of the cursory definition of provocative is causing annoyance and anger you know I mean this is this is almost a word a similar to crazy so anyways but I believe that getting back to a truer self is largely on the controllable side of what I talked about in the initial theory there and that's that number one point it's a controllable and it also relates to the number three point which is that we can discern that it's not only is it in the controllable side of our lives but we can figure out that it actually is and we link link those together and we can begin to make strides towards uh, a new and improved self just so before I get on very far here uh, if you want to leave a comment in the bottom, if you're in the Saskatoon area, I'm going to be forming a group who work on getting back to that inner self and empower ourselves a lot more. So I hope I've made the case that, you know, that we have been led astray in many ways and that hopefully that um, I've made the suggestion of the possibility that we can begin this process to get back to that real self so that we can have more constructive and enjoyable lives. That's in a nutshell um, what I talked about. We had lots of comments and discussion afterwards on this particular topic. Crazy. Let's make crazy the new normal in 2017. Steve, you're again. Great chatting. Hope to talk again soon. Bye for now.